Yeah, thanks for the warm welcome. Um, as he said, I'm Jan, and I'm going to talk about making music with JavaScript and gamepads. And last year, I had the chance uh, to attend JSConf uh, U. I, I didn't have the money, but there was a company that made a, a raffle, and they, their name is uh, DotCloud. And uh, thank you, DotCloud. Um, and when I was there, there was this, this one talk that really blew my mind, and it was this talk here. Uh, it was Stuart Memo's talk, JavaScript is the new punk rock, and it highly, hey Jan, uh, inspired me to uh, hold a talk here now. So what, what are you going, what, what can you expect from this talk? So, so first I'm, I'm going to give a quick introduction to the Web Audio API, like really quick and just some demos. Uh, then I will talk about the Gamepad API that makes this possible here. Uh, and then in the end, I will combine these two APIs to create music. Uh, let's see how that goes. Um, I have to say, uh, both of these APIs are still draft APIs. So they're kind of unstable, uh, so please bear with me if something breaks. And it's only working in Chrome for now. I know Web Audio is also supported in Firefox, but I would have to use two polyfills in my demos, and they are unstable without their polyfills. I don't know if it's better if I have, when I have two polyfills. So yeah, um, the Web Audio API, what is it? Uh, I think many of you have heard of it. It's a low-level access in JavaScript to all things audio, which means uh, we can create sounds, we can um, manipulate sounds with filters, uh, we can time sounds very precisely, which is new and which is for me one of the biggest features and there's tons of other cool stuff I will not mention for example spatial audio and uh, audio analysis for example spatial audio is you can say that the sound source comes from uh, there and it's pointing to that direction and uh, the audio API is capable of uh, emulating um, the, the sound of the room so it actually sounds as, it's, as it is as if the sound comes from there um, but before, um, what is sound? Like, do you feel comfortable with your physics knowledge about sounds and waves? Like, I don't. Who, who doesn't? Okay, half of you are physicists. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, sound is a mechanical wave that's an oscillation of pressure. Uh, it's trans transmitted through some medium, in our case air, uh, composed of frequencies within the range of hearing. Uh, so what it means, like I stomp my feet, did you hear it? Okay. Um, is, this created a wave, it went through the air into your ear and it had a frequency you could hear. And what does sound look like? Because um, when we're talking about frequencies and uh, waves, like that's very abstract to me, but this is a very nice image that shows uh, a speaker, just like the speakers here everywhere, uh, at a slow motion, it's playing at 61 hertz, um, uh, sound, and you can really see the, the, the sine wave it's doing, so it really creates sine waves in the end. Um, yeah, but let's get like, into the Web Audio API. Let's, let's oscillate ourselves. Like, uh, if we're doing something with the Web Audio API, we first have to create a context that's very similar to uh, the Canvas API, because context is where we have all our methods and then we can create an oscillator which creates waves. Um, we create it simply from the uh, context. Then we can say, okay, this oscillator should be of type zero, which means it creates sine waves. And we, we set the frequency value to uh, 22K. Uh, so it will create a wave of 22K. And then what we do, we have the oscillator and we have the context. And the context knows uh, about the speakers. So we need to connect the oscillator to the speakers. It's done by oscillator.connect con context destination. So if we didn't do that, we, we wouldn't hear it because no output. And then what we have to do is say note on, like play it right now. And did anyone spot the biological mistake in that one? Uh, we can't hear about yes, he's right. We can't hear 22K. Um, I, would, I will show you. Um, I, I forgot to plug in. God, you wouldn't hear it because it's not plugged in. Oh, thanks. Sorry.
Oh, it's very loud. So are there any cats inside this room? Because, oh, okay, okay this, this might be, this, this might hurt. So I play the 22 kilohertz. You're not hearing anything because you're humans. No cats? Okay. Uh, so now let's, this might not sound like real music to you. Maybe it might sound like music to aliens, but not for us. So this is now playing uh, a sine wave with a very low frequency. We can do, and if we have like a different um, type of wave, they sound even worse. Like you want, uh, it's a square. Oh god. Uh, well, you can do the same. And bass. And you have the triangle, which is way more condensed, very stable. Okay. So this is like the, the most basic thing you can do with the Web Audio API, like creating waves, which uh, I think is really awesome, but it doesn't sound so good. What really sounds good is uh, songs. So let's play a song. So load, first we have to load a file. So now we create an XML HTTP request, which is really easy because we're JavaScript developers. We know how to do that. Uh, let's play Get Lucky. Whoa. That's very original. And there's a, we need to set the, the response type to array buffer because we're dealing with um, binary data here. And on load, we're going to process the file. Very simple. Uh, processing, ooh, yeah. processing the file means uh, we have the context somewhere defined. We need to decode all the audio data that we have. So we put in the uh, response. Uh, this is the success callback. Uh, which will give us a buffer. A buffer is something that we can use to play that song. Uh, if something goes wrong, there's an error callback. Well, it, I hope it works today. It worked yesterday. So now we need to play it. Playing a sound file is also fairly simple. We have the context and we create a source node, a buffer source node from it. We assign it the buffer we just got back from the XML HTTP request. Then we connect the source to the destination and we say start zero. So, oh yeah, actually let's, uh, let's play uh, Get Lucky. You might not have, uh, okay. Oh. This song is not available in your country. Oh shit. Please go to your local GMA office. They will tell you why. Ah. Yeah, we're in Germany, so we, we're actually not allowed to play that song. Yeah. So let, let, let's play something that's, uh, oh, unstable APIs, I'm sorry. That's, that was not planned. Oh, no, now it's gone. Sorry, you have to bear with me now, already. Perfect. That was a good sound. So uh, let's play it. I said that. I played Daft Punk, haha. And now let's play an actual song that's hopefully uh, gamer free and the, the author is in, in the room. We are the regions. We are the regions. Okay, that was easy. Um, playing sound. Uh, we could do that with the old audio tag, but. Uh, now we have more control about what's happening. Uh, what else can we do? We can do filters. Like, what is a filter when it comes to audio? A filter is something uh, that manipulates the frequency spectrum. For example, um, a low-pass filter might only allow lower frequencies and removes all the others. And most basic filters are already implemented, so we can use them. Of course, uh, you can create your own filters to do really crazy stuff. Uh, that's one of the things that kind of uh, I will not try out today because it kind of breaks sometimes, uh, and it's really hard to understand. So let's create a really simple filter. Like this is a biquad filter we always created from the context. We say the type it should be a low pass, as I said, only low frequencies. And then uh, we set the frequency value of this filter to 100. It's not important what that means, but what's really important is we now connect the song to the filter 
and then the filter to the destination, so that we have a setup like this, like, so the filter's in between and can manipulate the audio. Uh, yeah, let's, let's play that. It's, it might not sound so good. We are the regents. We are the regents. So this is low pass, this is high pass. This wasn't the conference we won. And that's really easy to do. So, and now I have to say that when you have the oscillator and the filters, you can actually create um, music from that, but I will not do that today because it's really complicated. I will focus on timing because timing is key when it comes to audio. When you're a band on stage, the delay between the instruments is really important. And like before, like imagine we were a band and we only had set timeout and request animation frame, that would really suck because it's a lot of offset calculations because you never know when the next frame is coming and uh, it's so inaccurate, like even pro musicians couldn't adopt to that delay. Um, but timing in web audio is uh, really easy because timing is always relative to the current context. So we have the context.current time, which is you play the first note and then the context.current time is a time bar in seconds um, that always goes on, it's like never ending. And so we can, if we time something, we can do it in relation to this. And for example, let's, let's start a buffer or a song in, in two seconds. So we, we, we did that before, like we have our source note and we, before we said start zero, which means immediately. And now we're saying uh, two seconds from now. And imagine you would do that with set timeout. It might not be two seconds exactly, maybe 199 or something. Uh, and the start method even has more options, so we can define when we want to play it, like from what, like do we have an offset in the buffer, do we want to skip to our favorite part in the song, and for how long do we want to play it? And uh, let's try this out. So I don't know play a song, I would click this button and there will be two seconds, a bit more because the song starts with, um, um, like, th there's nothing in, in the beginning of the song, so it might be 2.5 seconds, but it's accurate, trust me. Uh, okay, click. Yeah. Yeah, you got Rico. Um, the best thing is, uh, the stop method has the same options and the very best thing is, I can't stop the song immediately, I have to wait two seconds. Oh no, it's, it's running out. Damn, I, I spoke too much, I, I will do it again. Oh, yeah. you, you all love the song, right? So I have to wait, I click and in, ten, in two seconds, it's gone. So now let's skip to our favorite part. That's really easy. <laughs> Okay, uh, timing has one thing that's even more great than thinking about the now. We can like set future values. For example, if we have a note, gain is something like the, the volume, like how loud it is, and we can set a value at a certain time. So we can say, set a song to 0.2, like the, the volume to 0.2 in five seconds. And again, imagine that with, uh, Request animation frame, oh my god. Uh, we can even do more, like linear ramp to value at time is a really nice method name, by the way. Uh, it sets the gain to zero in five seconds, but it will uh, have an interpolation in between, so we'll get uh, slightly uh, lower over time. Okay, so now I only try out the, f the first one now, so we play something and then in, uh, in five seconds it will get Less value. We are the regents. We are the regents. I didn't do anything. But playing. Okay. Demos. Okay. If you want to get into the web audio API, the first thing you might want to do is like the hello world, and that's a drum machine. Of course, it's a drum machine. Like everybody who's uh, been working with it did it. So I think I opened it here. 
So how good can you see it? Nice. So this like a drum machine is uh, well suited because uh, it's a lot of timing involved and you, you load buffers and you have the BPM and you have to adopt to it. So I have some, some examples to show. Like a very simple beat will be this. Yeah. Let's add some variation. Nice, nice, okay. Let's uh, do some hip hop. Ooh. And now there's a beer challenge. Like the person who guesses correctly the, the beat of the next song is invited to beer by me. Like not one from downstairs because they're free, but at a bar or something. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Yes. It's, it starts over. Anyone? Maybe? Okay, it has something to do with my Twitter name. It's uh, the Deftone. It might be a song from the Deftones. Anyone? No? Oh yeah, he knows it. Around the fur, correct. Nice. You get a beer. Thanks. Okay, um, that's like the, the, the hello world. And there's some other really exciting demos. I will not show this one because it like we need a very stable internet connection. I know it's kind of stable, but anyways. <laughs> uh, but there's Jam with Chrome, which is like, ah, uh, it's reloading. Oh, it worked. Perfect. Yeah, it might not work, look so well on that screen, though. But it actually allows you to play fake, re like real fake instruments uh, with your friends. Um, and you can do this, like, now I have a... Okay, I can do like something like that. And imagine that playing with five of your friends and like everybody's playing a different instrument. It's like really fun. Over the internet, of course. Uh, yeah, that's a more sophisticated demo, I think. I think. So uh, that's web audio. Uh, let's talk about gamepads in gaming. Um, like there are more and more complex games written in JS, like. We have Canvas now with WebGL, and it allows us to do so many cool things. Uh, but controlling games is really like it's still old-fashioned. We have the WASD, the arrows, mouse, and keys. Like ah, uh, there's one problem with that because uh, it's the digital versus analog. So WASD is a digital uh, way of controlling a game because you only know if a button is pressed, but know how hard it's not how hard it's pressed, and like. A gamepad like this uh, has analog sticks, which gives you way more precision, and that's uh, way more suited for some of the games. Uh, wouldn't it be nice uh, to use gamepads in your browser? Would be, right? Uh, yay, we got the gamepad IPR now, so we can use all our favorite gamepads in the browser. How do we do it? Um, so it's really simple. Again, it's only WebKit. I'm sorry, Firefox. Um, we simply get all the gamepads that are connected. And then we say, oh, the first one is it's an array, so it's zero. And now we want to read the buttons. The buttons is just uh, something that lies on the object. It's an array of 17. Yeah, this has 17 buttons, really. And the but like if it's, it's also an array, so I can say, OK, button zero is uh, currently has the value of zero, which means it's not pressed. One, it's pressed. Uh, yeah, but that's still digital. Let's uh, do some analog things. It has axes, and the axes are the analog sticks. Um, same thing as for the buttons, but this time we get float values, which is awesome. And um, yeah, we have all the indexes, but how am I supposed, like, uh, which one is seven on this one? Oof. I don't know, but ah, unfortunately, it's uh, standardized. Uh, let, 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 let's zoom in a bit. So if I have the up button on the D-pad, it's always button 12. Like, no matter what gamepad you're using, like PS2, uh, PS3 and uh, Xbox, it's always the same, and that's really awesome. So just a, a quick demo of how it looks like. So these are all the buttons that I have on this one. And if I now use this one, 
like an analog value here, you can see we got float, float values. And then if I press the, the A button, it's, it should be the, the one on the pad. Yes, it works. Nice. Uh, so it's really standardized, so you can rely on it. Um, but yeah, did you notice something? Uh, look closely again. Uh, something's weird about this. Um, any guesses? It's, it's correct. Like, there are no problems. Okay, uh, I'll tell you what. It's not event driven, like, not at all. We have to read out the state and then. We don't get an event when, when something's uh, pressed. So this is why, because the, the API is designed for usage in games. And uh, games often, or most games, have an update loop where they update their state. And this also includes the gamepad states. So it's a uh, request animation frame again, uh, sadly, for this API. Um, because we have to pull the state every time now. Uh, but events may be added in the, in the future. I think Firefox already has some events for connecting devices. OK, let, let's play something. And that's okay. a live performance now. It's fun for you, not for me. Oh, it doesn't work so well. Uh, I, wa I was trying to OK, I'll skip this. I wanted to show you that I actually press uh, the buttons. You have to uh, trust me now. Have you, have you seen this doodle? It's, uh, it was doodle for the Olympic Games, and you could use it with, your, um, with the keyboard, but also it has support for um, gamepads, and nobody knew that. Like, they announced it, but nobody used it. And so, yeah, I could do this, but I can also do it like this, and then jump, oh, I'm good. Nah, fuck. Shit. Come on. Last one. No. Yay. <laughs> that, that's pretty nice. Uh, I want that. More. More games, please. Game developers. Uh, but they know about it. So uh, how do we combine the Web Audio API and uh, the, um, the, the Gamepad API? So it's, it's really simple, and I can try with this one. And for the next demos, I will perform live on stage, and I never did that before, so uh, it might not be so good. So I'll do a quick demo with this one. Flash, flash, flash. OK. Flash, flash, flash. Oh, wait a sec. Anyone? Nice. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I, it doesn't really feel so nice to do it with this uh, controller. So uh, let's go back a bit. Like, Let's talk about gamepads again. What, what is a, a gamepad? Like, I came up with this. If it has a button, it's a gamepad. It's duct typing. And so assuming that this only works if your browser knows uh, the gamepad, uh, luckily, uh, the browser actually knows some gamepads. And for example, it's, it knows this one. Like, oh, have you, do you know it? Guitar Hero, amazing game. It has buttons, like here. So um, I brought one, of course. I. Let me see. Oh, that's no good. That's good. OK. Um, I made a little demo. It's called Guitar.js, or in German, it's Alleinunterhalter.js. Uh, <laughs> It's like solo entertainer. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't forget to tune the guitar. Um, OK, let's see. Oops. Which one am I using? Oh, I don't know. Which one is it? OK, should be number one. OK. Um, what you see here is uh, the four buttons that I have here. Like, I have five, but this one's not working, oh, sadly. Um, 
so can only play really, like really, really easy songs with it. And uh, like I used to play guitar when I was young, uh, that but I got old and um, I stopped playing guitar when I went to uni, and I never had a gig uh, in front of more than like two people. So yeah, like my first big audience. Um, but actually, let, let me just uh, try how, how it feels. Everybody knows the song, it's not a beer challenge now, uh, because it's far too obvious. Like, um <laughs> okay. Damn it. But yeah, it's not so fun to play alone and Sadly, there was one thing happening just yesterday. Uh, do you know uh, Rock Band? It's a game for the Xbox, and like I, I, I used to have the drums, like I had them, and no, I borrowed them from a friend, and they broke down. So originally, my plan was to get someone from the audience <laughs> to uh, play the, the drums with me, or I, I'd play the drums because the guitars is so easy, so everybody of you could do it. Uh, but they broke down, like yesterday, I was like, oh fuck, what am I going to do? Uh, so I got a shitty recording of that song and um, filtered out most of the guitar parts, so I can now bring my own drum player, like pressing this button. Okay, let's let's put this away. So connected. Okay, there 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 are more controllers actually. Like that's that's really amazing. Uh, let me reconnect this one. I hope it doesn't break now. Ah, it's not working. It's uh, it didn't break yet. But okay. Oh, it's connected. Perfect. Do you know this one? No. Okay, it's not that well known, although. Uh, it's, it's the DJ Hero turntable, and DJ Hero is like the, the same as Guitar Hero, but with a turntable. And so, okay, maybe this one, like, I, I tried it out in uni, and it's like, maybe I can use GameFed API with it, and it's like, turns out you can. Um, so I made a quick demo. <laughs> uh. Okay. Oh yeah, push the button as if you're just relaxed, right. Like, um, I'm fairly new to DJing. Uh, I kind of started yesterday. So I'm number two. Again, this is, um, which one should I use? Oh, this one. Uh, this one is so you can see what I'm doing on that thing that I connected. Um, yeah, I will explain what I'm doing while I'm doing it. Uh, I hope it works. So I can press this button, or if I press this button, it should start playing. And it doesn't. That's perfect. Okay, okay. Let me just again, let me try this out. Uh, oh, what? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, now, now it's working. Perfect. The, the button wasn't working, but that's okay. I can just pray. Hmm? Oh, fuck. It's playing already. Huh. Thanks. I forgot. Let's put some volume in it. Oh, that's, that's too much. Okay, thanks. Um, let me see if it's working. Yes. Let's, let's start the song. Uh, it's... Okay, for some reason it's not really working.
just listen to the song while I'm uh, fixing things. doesn't work now, you have to trust me that it works. Normally it does. Maybe I broke this one too. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Perfect. What I just did is uh, I pressed the Q button. Queuing is something that DJs use to repeat parts of the song. So you press the button once, it starts kind of recording the song. And then uh, if you press it the second time, uh, the, the audio will loop that section and it's hard for me because I'm not trained at this uh, but I try to mix the song in a nice way now. Um, you already know the song so I shouldn't, I can't, I don't need to ask. Okay. Like a DJ, I'm not doing anything. Something, I, I, it wasn't very precise, I have to say. Uh, but what can I, I can do now is uh, alternate the volume. Uh, but I can also add some more bass. Who wants more bass? That sounds nice. Um, I have to wait and spray. I don't need to do anything. Okay. Like, have you seen the gamepad? It has like this this, this spinning thing. Uh, originally, you, you you use it to like scratch, but scratching. Uh, I, I can't do it. Like I, I could maybe, but the Web Audio API doesn't allow me to. Scratching uh, needs something like being able to play a buffer backwards. So we have a playback rate on on a buffer, and we can say play it at the normal speed. It's playback rate one. Um, would be really nice to have like negative values, so we play it backwards. We don't have it, but I can do like make a nice outro now, like freestyle. And it's gone. Yeah, resetting controllers is nice. You have to remove the batteries. Okay, uh, let's go on. Um, there are some problems I have with the Web Audio API, and it's still very unstable, and browsers may really crash uh, when doing really fancy stuff. And as I said, there's no <laughs> negative play rate, so we won't have like scratch JS. Uh, it's okay. Um, would be really nice to have like the, the current time of a buffer node. Like when I have the current time of the whole track, but not the, the current time of one buffer that I'm playing. And I need to calculate like offsets for that. That would be really nice to have a current time. Uh, there's only one destination for now. Again, a problem for DJs. Like a DJ has two turntables and he listens to the song on the right, but he's playing the song on the left and then he fades between this. Well, you can only do that if you have like two uh, sound cards uh, because you need to listen to that one, but the other one's playing. How do you do that with one sound card? And it does, like we only have one destination for now. It would be really cool to have like two. So we have DJJS, like a proper DJJS. Uh, no. Yes. Actually, yes, you could do that. But then, yeah. Yes, 
if you have 5.1, yes, it doesn't work for stereo because then you would have crappy sound. Okay, some problems with uh, GamePad IPA. Uh, it's unstable. So unstable meaning like Firefox and Chrome are highly inco incompatible. Um, maybe because of Chrome having the uh, prefixes and Firefox having some events in there. Uh, it's really like there are some polyfills that fix it. Uh, I want events, please. I, I'm a JavaScript developer. I need, I need events. For games, it's okay, but I need events. Uh, and I want to talk to the gamepad. Like, it doesn't have, like, rumble. Like, this one has a rumble, but it doesn't, like, I can't talk to it. Or some uh, gamepads have LEDs, and it would be really awesome to talk to them. Um, yeah, it's sometimes unstable, as you've seen. Uh, like, it doesn't connect the gamepads properly. It's too, too good. It only happened once today. And please add the Guitar Hero 1 drum kit, because I have one at the office, and I could use it so we can have a Rock Band JS. But we need to wait for uh, browsers to implement that. OK, uh, wrapping up. Uh, Web Audio API is like, incredibly powerful. I haven't shown you everything. And uh, it's, it's really amazing. Uh, Gamepad API is awesome, and it's so easy to use if it works. And when combined, like, they, they allow us to play real instruments if we have like, controllers that look like real instruments, and we can fake to play a real instrument. And that's really fun. You can try it out maybe. No, not on the party, but just ask me, and I'll tell you how to do it. And I can see things like GarageBand.js with like, DJ equipment in future only just in your browser. That would be really nice. And uh, I'm Jamonske. This is my Twitter handle. I'm Jamonske on uh, GitHub. On Please contact me if you want to found a JavaScript band. It would be really nice. Uh, thanks.